Mario Kart, one of Nintendo's most beloved spin-off series, selling millions and being one of the top sellers in every Nintendo console. Such as others out there, I am such a big fan of Mario Kart, and I've been with the series for a while ever since Double Dash, since that was my first game. And as you can see by the title, we will be going over the Mario Kart Iceberg. So in case you don't know what an iceberg video is, I'll quickly just explain it. It's this image full of different hoaxes, theories, um, secrets, trivia, anything of the sorts for a certain series. With the deeper you going being a bit more obscure, not known, or just a bit plain weird. I actually have already done another iceberg video relating to Ding and Rampa. So you know, if you want to go watch that video as well, a link will be in the description. All of my sources for information, research, etc. will be in the description. And you know, with the intro out the way, let's get into the iceberg. Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection. This is basically Nintendo's old online service during the Wii and the DS days, as later down the line, it got replaced with Nintendo Network in 2012. However, Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart DS, and Super Smash Bros. Brawl were some of the most popular games when it came to the service, so I guess that's why it's on here, but unfortunately, the service got discontinued in 2014, meaning it's impossible to use anymore. Nintendo 64 Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut. I'm sure many old school players know about this, as the name suggests, there's a certain spot on the original Rainbow Road for Nintendo 64, involving you throwing a shell at yourself to get over the rails, and then advance further into the course. Since this course was probably one of the longest tracks in the game, people use it for speedruns, to get records, and I'm sure this shortcut has been spread around quite a while during its heydays. Rob. Mario Kart DS featured a very standard cast with some odd exceptions like Koopa Troopa being replaced with Dry Bones or Shy Guy being locked to only people using DS download play. However, Mario Kart DS had another secret character unlock which is Rob. Rob doesn't really need much of an explanation nowadays, but it's basically a toy from the 80s that Nintendo used for a couple games. Rob was by far the hardest character to unlock in uh, Mario Kart DS. And plus, on top of that, this marked the first ever non-Mario character to ever join the Mario Kart series. TWD98 I'm sure many of you in the Mario Kart community are familiar with this person, as they are a YouTuber with over 300k subscribers. They mostly focus on Mario Kart Wii content, with other Mario Kart games being shown off here and there. I like Troy's videos, and even if I haven't watched a ton of them recently, he's very respected and very liked within the community, so that's why he's on here. And he does make great videos, so if you do want to go check out their channel, the link will be in the description. Rubber banding. Rubber banding is basically a term used in video games in general. However, in Mario Kart's take, it refers to people accusing the AI in Mario Kart to be rubber banding, which means stuff such as getting faster speed when behind, or having an unfair advantage when it comes to items. So in hindsight, it basically means that it's trying to give the AI a chance to catch up to you, but as far as I can tell, I believe the most accused game of this is Mario Kart Wii, as the item spamming and the item <laughs> unfairness in that game is insane, with other games in this series slowly falling behind in that topic. Emblems. Emblems is that thing you can do in Mario Kart DS where you can design your own emblem on a grid and put it on your car. Outside of this, there wasn't really much of a use for it, and personally for me, I never bothered with it, and I don't ever hear any outcry or anything in the community for its return. And I mean, the thing is, it's actually never returned from Mario Kart DS, so honestly, I think it's probably just gonna stay stuck on that game because I don't see a reason for them to bring it back. Donkey Kong Jr. was planned for Double Dash. Mario Kart Double Dash had a couple of demo discs that were used for people to play the demo of the game on, obviously, as demo discs were popular during the GameCube era. However, these demo discs included so much more unused graphics and strings of text that weren't in the final game. But when looking at one of the unused graphics, we see an early version of the character selection item or icons, and as you can see, Donkey Kong Jr. is here instead of Diddy Kong. As far as I can tell, apart from this, there isn't any other, like, footage or images or anything of Donkey Kong Jr. being in the game. However, the fact that it's in the game files is basically enough evidence to say that Donkey Kong Jr. was considered, but ultimately Diddy Kong was the best choice. Mario Kart Tour. 
I'm not exactly sure why this one is on here, as I'm pretty sure it's just talking about the game in general. So like, I'm not exactly sure what to say here, except that Mario Kart Tour is a mobile Mario Kart game. A lot of people hate it, and a lot of people love it. It's got very mixed opinions in terms of the community, and honestly, I would play it a lot more if the gotcha shit didn't ruin the game. Coconut Mall Ultra Shortcut For this one, there is an out of bounds coconut mall glitch that allows you to clip into the car park at the end of the track. If you drive in a certain pattern, you'll be able to basically finish the entire race by driving in a circle three times. Just like all the shortcuts on this iceberg, it's mostly done by people doing speedruns or want better records. Character crossovers. Just like Rob early on this list, this refers to all the crossover characters seen within the series. So far we've had Link, Inklings, Isabel, and Villager. With these only being crossover characters at the moment, there are also crossover amiibo costumes from other series such as Sonic, Pac-Man, Pikmin, Kirby, Star Fox, and more. I'm sure later down the line we're gonna get a lot more character crossovers, as I feel like Mario Kart 8, uh, the way they did it, was just the beginning. So honestly, I like this future for Mario Kart. Luigi's Backwards L On Mario Kart Double Dash's box art, the L in Luigi's hat is backwards. At first, fans thought this was because it could have been a reference to Mirror Mode and that the whole box art was flipped. However, DK's car isn't flipped, so... This was just a mistake on the box art. I have no idea how it happened. And honestly, I don't think there's much more to it apart from being an accident. One Lap Tracks this is in reference to the certain tracks in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart 8 that have one laps. These tracks act more like tours and they actually benefit the one lap system quite well. I'm sure we will see these more in the future, however as it stands there aren't many one lap tracks in the game compared to a regular three lap system. Unplayable Mario Kart Wii characters. Within the game files of Mario Kart go unused character icons, which ultimately suggests that these characters were originally going to be playable in the game, but were scrapped for unknown reasons. Firstly, we have is PD Piranha and Koopa Paratrooper, who both appeared in Double Dash, and to this day stay exclusively to Double Dash, as for whatever reason have just never been brought back. And here we have a Hammer Bro who was going to be a newcomer for the series. And, you know, it's kind of funny because it was going to be their first playable appearance. However, to this day, they still remained unreleased and unplayable in Mario Kart. I mean, they're playable in Mario Kart Tour now, but in mainline Mario games, they're not, they're not here. Peach is going backwards on the Mario Kart 8 box art. Well, this one is kind of just as it says. In the Mario Kart 8 box art is the 8 circuit track from the same game. I get what they were trying to go for with the whole anti-gravity thing on the box art. However, if you look at the layout and the way they are going on the box art compared to the actual game, Peach and Mario are actually going backwards on the track, which is just like the backwards L thing on Luigi's hat. It's probably just a mistake and nothing more, but it's kind of funny to look at. Royal Raceway Peach's Castle. On the track Royal Raceway from Mario Kart 64, there's a certain point on the track where you can just go explore the outside of Peach's Castle, which is just the hub area of Mario 64, just a bit smaller. It's a really cool looking easter egg, and honestly, outside of just having fun, there isn't actually a point to checking this out in the game, but it's a really cool easter egg. However, when they brought this track back for Mario Kart 8, they actually blocked this off, so you can't check it out which basically ruins the easter egg, I mean it's such an odd thing to do, but okay. Maka Woohoo Ultra Shortcut Similar to other Ultra Shortcuts on this iceberg, there was a certain place on Mario Kart 7's track Maka Woohoo, where if you went out of bounds then you would respawn in another location on the track, meaning this was needed for speedrunners or record places. However, later down the line they patched this shortcut out, but people's records were still there who used it, so I, I didn't see the point of this, but there you go. Regional track name differences. This refers to the names of tracks being different for certain regions. This is done for many reasons such as traditional Japanese culture not connecting with the same with a uh, American audience. For some reason most of the differences come from the American version and the European version more than anything else. And I'll list a couple off by saying the American versions first, followed by the European versions. DK Summit is DK Snowboard Cross. Cheap Cheap Lagoon is Cheap Cheap Cape. Woohoo Loop is Woohoo Island Loop. Piranha Plant Slide is Piranha Plant Pipeway. Maka Woohoo is Woohoo Island Loop. Music Park is Melody Motorway. 
And lastly, Bone Dry Dunes is the exact same, but just without the dash. Fire hopping. This was a technique or a tech in the original Mario Kart 8 game, where after a boost, if you constantly did the jump button left and right, you would do something called fire hopping, which allowed you to get a bit of an extra boost. It wasn't too much of a boost, but to be honest, it was very needed for speedrunners or pro players. However, when Mario Kart Deluxe came out, they patched fire hopping, seemingly because they either saw it as a glitch or a bug. Honestly, I'm surprised it took them until Deluxe to patch this out, rather than patching out when the DLC came around, because I'm sure they knew about it. DK Jungle Parkway Island. I'm honestly not too sure what this means, as researching doesn't really help much. However, my only guess is that they mean this small island right here that appears uh, just before the boost. My guess is that it's referring to that maybe people are trying to get to the island, or maybe you can if there's a way to get there without hacking to see if it's possible. Because apart from that, I have zero clue what this means. FPS mode. At first, I thought this meant a mode to tell you your frames per second, but then I saw people talk about it online, which wasn't a mode, and then I thought, oh, they probably meant the Mario Kart 7 mode, where you can play in first person. However, that's called first person view, which would mean that it would be called FPV mode, not FPS mode. So, I legit have no idea what they mean by FPS mode. So, if anybody in the comments can please let me know, I would love to know, because I legit have no idea what, what this means. The Mario Kart Wii channel. This was a specific Wii channel dedicated to Mario Kart Wii, where you could use the game's Wi-Fi features a lot more than the original game, such as tournaments, doing online ghost races, view rankings, and much more. The channel was a fun little distraction to mess around with, however, just like Nintendo's Wii Online, when it got discontinued, the existence of the channel is basically non-existent anymore. Grumble Volcano Ultra Shortcut. This is the last famous shortcut on the list, which involves Grumble Volcano. At the start of the race, next to the starting line, is this mountain rock thing, whatever, over here. If you manage to get on top of here, there is a trick in order to complete all three laps just by circling the rock. I have no idea why this happens, it feels as though the game believes you are out of bounds, but you're not, so that's why this trick works. Either way, just like I've mentioned before, this is kind of required for pro players, but this shortcut was removed in the Mario Kart 8 version. Sherbet Land Island Just like the DK Jungle Island one, this is from Sherbet Land on the Nintendo 64 version. It basically is a giant course around this one island in the middle with a giant penguin walking around. I'm sure many players believe that it was possible to get to this island without hacking, and I'm sure many of us when we first played had theories about getting there since I remember the first time I played this track on Mario Kart Wii, I thought it would have been really cool to go to the middle of the island with the penguin, but unfortunately I don't think there's any possible way to get there. CTGP Revolution. This is a custom application which adds over 200 custom tracks to Mario Kart Wii. Created by the talented modders of Mr. Bean 35,000 VR and Chadders, released in 2014. I'm pretty sure to this day they're still being updated with thousands of custom tracks that you can play online using a custom Wi Fi called Wii Mafi? I, I probably said that wrong, sorry. And the thing is, when you check the stats, there are thousands of people still playing online, even as we speak right now, which is so cool, and I'm really happy that this community has carried on, uh, carried on living despite Nintendo taking down the servers, and it's created an amazing place for people to enjoy Mario Kart Wii. A link to their website will be in the description if you want to check it or download it for yourself to play with others. Fake Item Box Removal This refers to the fact that in recent releases on Mario Kart, the fake item box items have basically just been removed and forgotten. I can kind of see as to why they did this, as it works the exact same as a banana. It's fairly obvious which is a fake and which is a real box as well, and honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, fake item boxes are actually worse because you can't defend yourself from hits, while well, bananas you can. Either way, the last time a fake item box was in a mainline Mario game was Mario Kart Wii, which was back in 2008. And honestly, I don't see it returning anytime soon. Fourth place gets blown up. This refers to Mario Kart 64, where if you don't get a top 3 spot at the end of the four races, your character is just here, they're just watching the other characters get their rewards. Then the, sm <laughs> then the music slowly turns very weird and changes tone very quickly, but afterwards your character drives off over a hill only to get blown up by a bomb. Honestly, this scene is kind of comedic with Toad, as you do like a little funny scream, 
But with every other character, it's just very quiet and it feels really morbid and weird, honestly. Especially with the sudden sort of music changing. Galaxy Colosseum. This was a battle stage that is currently inaccessible that features an enemy from Mario Galaxy since the battle stage inside is basically just a whole big galaxy reference. These were playable during different tournaments that Nintendo set up and the goal was to knock off the enemy with each item box giving you a triple mushroom. This was a really cool concept and I love the galaxy themed arena since well it's the only galaxy reference in the games in terms of a stage. And of course, because of the Nintendo Wi-Fi being terminated, it's impossible to access this stage anymore unless you hack the game yourself. Peach and Bowser get wasted. This refers to both Peach and Bowser drinking champagne bottles within their victory screens. Bowser drinking so much that it's pouring from their mouth, and Peach's face getting really blushy and really red from drinking. However, these were only in the Japanese version, as during this period, Nintendo of America's policy did not allow any suggestion of drinking of anything alcoholic. So in every other version, their victory screens were changed. For Bowser, it just shows them cheering with the bottle, and with Peach, it shows her flipping the bottle into the air and catching it again. DK Pass Special Item Box in the Mario Kart DS track DK Pass, there is a special item box so when you get to the top of the mountain, there's a hill to your left which just looks pointless, but there's a hidden item box at the top. As far as I can tell, this specific item box gives you better items than normal. Even if you in first, you'll get stuff such as triple mushrooms or even stars. I have no idea why this is a thing, but it's a really cool little secret. And the special item box actually does come back for Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart Tour. Double Dash 16 Player Mode. This comes from the LAN mode within the game that was used as a sort of multiplayer mode where you could play with multiple GameCubes, so you wouldn't have to do split screen, and it was before online multiplayer was a thing for Nintendo. In order to get 16 players, you would need 4 GameCubes with 2 split screens, and then since Double Dash has a thing where you can play with 2 players, one driving, one holding the items, you can get 16 players or 8 game cubes with 2 people per game cube. Honestly, there are videos out there of this show of uh, people using this, and it looks like a lot of fun, but I can imagine it being really annoying to set up. Mission Mode in Wii. Mario Kart DS features Mission Mode, and it's pretty liked within the community doing different challenges while fighting bosses at the end. Mario Kart Wii was originally going to have a Mission Mode, but was replaced for unknown reasons. One reason I see brought up a lot is the fact that Tournament Modes on the Mario Kart Wii channel basically replaced what Mission Mode was, and since you can't do them anymore, it's kinda just pointless. One reason why this blew up was because this was discovered 9 years after its release and Nintendo never said anything of the sorts, so we had no idea about this unused mode. Mr. Bean 35000 VR is who is one of the creators of that CTGP Revolution software that I mentioned earlier, is the same person who discovered this and provided all the coding for this unused mission mode. All the tracks in Double Dash are connected. So as the name says, Double Dash has many tracks that connect to each other and are really cool easter eggs. It kind of reminds me of how Super Mario Sunshine did this detail as well, and considering the fact that they're both on the GameCube and their release dates, uh, release dates were close to each other, I'm not surprised. Within Peach Beach and Yoshi Circuit, you can see a boat in the far distance which is the Daisy Cruiser track. And within Baby Park, you can see a volcano in the background, which is the same volcano that's featured in the DK Mountain track. And you can also see this volcano very slightly from Dino Dino Jungle. It's a really cool detail, and I wish they would do this more in the future. Kemic and Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart 64's beta character roster basically stayed the exact same, except Donkey Kong was replaced with Kemic. Nothing against them, but I feel like a Koopa would have made more sense to include over Kemic. However, in the final version, they were replaced with Donkey Kong, and ever since, Kemic has never seen a playable uh, appearance in the series. Imprisoned Thromp. This is from the Bowser Castle track in Mario Kart 64. There's a long hallway in which at the end of the hallway features a green Thromp in a, in a cell behind bars. There isn't a reason as to why they are behind bars, and it's most likely that this was just to give the impression to how scary the track was compared to other courses in the game, but people really jumped on this as like with crazy theories and hoaxes over the years. People saying stuff such as you can free the Thromp and fans even calling the Thromp Marty. 
even though they don't have an official name. But ever since, people have created these hoax images of opening the cell and unlocking Marty as a playable character in Mario Kart 64. It's honestly really funny and stupid in my opinion, I, I love it. And in the Wii version of this track, the Thwomp stays imprisoned, however, they aren't green this time. Mario Kart NEX. From what I'm gathering, this is just like a Lego thing. Not actually Lego, but basically very similar, where you can build your own tracks and races with Mario Karts. Some of the stuff here looks kind of cool. From what I'm seeing it, a lot of it was labeled as Mario Kart Wii. So that's probably uh, when they got around the time of being popular. But apart from it being a toy, I, I don't know what else to say here. Luigi's Raceway Special Item Box. In Mario Kart 64, Luigi's Raceway, uh, upon the second lap, a balloon with an item box will float down. You can jump and manage to get this if you time your jump correctly. It's kind of harder and it's a bit more situational than the one in DK Pass. However, here's the catch of this item box. It will always carry a blue shell inside. And that is really good, that feels kind of broken almost. Uh, however, when they brought this track back in Mario Kart 7, the item box was on the balloon, but unfortunately it was just a normal item box and does not guarantee a blue shell like it did in the original. Double Dash Bonus Disc. So back in the day, games used to have bonus discs sort of similar to demo discs, where with a purchase of Mario Kart Double Dash, you, you were entitled to get a bonus disc, which included playable GameCube demos such as Mario Party 5, Sonic Heroes, F-Zero uh, GX, and Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3. You can also watch game trailers for upcoming games like Kirby Air Ride, Pokemon Coliseum, and SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. These were cool little extras that got others interested in games, since back then, we really didn't have the information that we're used to, and also, apparently demo discs are, or bonus discs are really rare, so there's that too, I guess. Luigi's Mansion Good Ending. At the end of Luigi's Mansion, the game gives you different houses depending on how well your rank was throughout the game. On screen, you'll see different houses depending on what uh, rank you get, which is basically the endings for these games. But on Luigi's Circuit Track from Mario Kart Double Dash, you can see the outside of the track here, the rank A house for Luigi's Mansion ending, which is referred to the good ending. I guess this means that it's canon that Luigi got the good ending in Luigi's Mansion. Either way, it's a really cool detail that is hidden within this track. Pac-Man. I guess not a lot of people know about this one, but Pac-Man is a playable character in Mario Kart arcade games, which is called Mario Kart Arcade GP. These arcade games were made and published by Bandai Namco. It features your typical Mario characters like Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, Bowser, Wario, you know, the usual. But it also features characters like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, and Blinky, as these were a part of Bandai Namco. However, I find it so odd that these characters are yet to appear as playable characters in the mainline games, especially considering that they are fully playable here, and Pac-Man even has an amiibo costume in Mario Kart 8. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future Pac-Man becomes a playable character because of these arcade games. Mario Kart Doki Doki Race. Here's the gameplay of this. <laughs> I have legit no idea what's happening. It looks to be a Japanese arcade game, and I have no idea how it even works or how it controls, because trust me, there's like barely any information online about this. My guess is that it may have been overtaken or replaced by the Mario Kart arcade produced by Bandai Namco, but apparently it was produced by Atlas, you know, the same Atlas that made Persona. And plus, when I try researching this topic, I just get people talking about DDLC, which has nothing to do with this, so because of that, I'm moving on. Mega Mushroom in Mario Kart 7. This comes from the game files of Mario Kart 7. If you look at a certain folder with a hex editor, you can see there are listed two unused items that never made it into the final game. One being the Mega Mushroom from Mario Kart Wii, and the other one being the fake item box. Since they are still within the coding of the game, it's believed that these were planned for development, but something must have gotten in the way or they got replaced. I can totally see the Mega Mushroom being a bit weird or not working correctly on the 3DS since it's portable, and maybe it just didn't fit with the whole gliding mechanic either. However, the fake item box, I have no idea why, and it was probably just the same reason as the why the fake item boxes have been removed from uh, most Mario Kart games. Super Mario Kart R. Super Mario Kart R is a kind of a well known for being the beta of Mario Kart 64. I'm not exactly sure why it was called Super Mario Kart R. However, it's obvious that 64 was added since nearly every Nintendo 64 game at the time had the number 64 in the title. Here's the old title screen, and here's what the old character selection screen would have looked like. 
And as you can see, featured earlier within the iceberg was Kemix taking over Donkey Kong's spot. There wasn't too much shown about this beta, so there's not much to say, but it's very interesting to see what the name was called and how the old hoods would have looked like, or even some of the courses. Alright, I'm going to talk about two here since they basically both relate to each other, but Mario Kart Arcade GP VR and Robo Mario. As the name suggests, Mario Kart Arcade VR is basically the arcade titles just in VR. Weirdly enough, this is technically classed as the fourth Mario game in the Mario Kart Arcade series. You wouldn't think they would make four of these, but here we are. The only characters you can play as or that are used are Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Peach. I guess this arcade game is kind of rare to come by. As you know, with this pandemic, it's way harder to do public VR things. And, you know, I just don't see that ever happening for a pandemic at this moment. And then, oh boy, Robot Mario. This isn't like a hoax or anything or a theory. Within the first two arcade titles, at the end of the Rainbow Cup, Robo Mario challenges you to a race. The thing is, you can't even attack Robo Mario, and mm, Robo Mario can spawn an infinite amount of items. Like, what? I have no idea what the origins for the character is, as there isn't any detail in the game. But judging by the fact that they have a Mario, uh, their Mario cap icon is Professor Egad. It's going to be another Sunshine situation where Egad has made something without anybody's knowledge. Plus, apparently, one of their main items is a black shell. The arcade games are kind of really weird, and it has stuff that we've never seen in the series before, like a poison mushroom, or a tornado, or a bone hammer. Mario Kart 64 Cape Feather. As the name suggests, in Mario Kart 64's beta, they were originally going to have the feather as an item, like there was in Super Mario Kart. The screenshots you can see on the screen aren't the best quality, but as you can see, these are from official screenings of the game before release. You can see the cape feather here. The thing is, during the Nintendo source leak, Mario Kart 64 source code shows that indeed the cape feather, uh, cape feather was going to be an item. Reasons for it being scrapped are unknown, but honestly, if you've played Mario 64, I rarely see a time where this could have been used. And because of that reason, I guess they saw it as pointless, which is probably why it got removed. Unlocking Rosalina via Mario Galaxy In Mario Kart Wii, many of you are familiar that this game in the series has the most character unlocks of any Mario game we've ever seen. In Rosalina's case, she made her first debut as a Mario Kart character in Wii, and in order to unlock her, you had to earn at least one star rating in all of the eight Mirror Cups. However, there was an alternate version of unlocking her, which if you had a Super Mario Galaxy save file on your Wii, and then playing at least 50 races, you could unlock her. I'm sure this is how many people unlocked Rosalina playing Wii because honestly, getting a star rating in Mirror Cups is actually really difficult. So I'm sure this is basically the main reason why people unlocked Rosalina in Wii, and I'm sure many people didn't even know how they unlocked her, but yeah. It's nice to see that they added an alternate way of adding characters from their own original games. Purple Shell Back onto the topic of unused or uh, scrapped items, the Purple Shell was an unused item in Mario Kart DS. However, it only came in a stack of three, instead of it just being a singular. Mario Kart DS had other unused items such as a Chain Chomp and the Bowser Shell. However, of these three items, only the Chain Chomp has data to it, where if you tried getting it working, all it does is crash the game. The Bowser Shell was in Double Dash, so we already know how that works. However, we have zero clue what a Purple Shell would have been used for or what it would have done, because there were zero comments attached to it. So that's all I can say, it's an unknown shell with unknown properties. Alternate Parade Cart The Parade Cart is the last cart you unlock in Double Dash. It's down by completing all the cups in Mirror Mode with a first place win. The thing is, is that the Parade Cart has an alternate version where when you win, both your characters will stand on these extenders while Toadworth drives. I guess people had theories or hoaxes that you could unlock these alternate versions of the cart. However, it's impossible to unlock any alternate version as it's just for show. Google Maps Mario Kart. So to celebrate Mario Day, which is March 10th, because you know, the month and the day spells out Mario's name, Google Maps put a really cool easter egg and a secret where you can have Mario driving for your Google Maps instead of it just being normally a dart. There isn't really much to it apart from a really cool easter egg, but honestly it's a cool detail and I hope more stuff comes like this in the future. Me Outfit C. In Mario Kart Wii, the Mii's have two different types of outfits. Me Outfit A has just a normal looking tracksuit, while Me Outfit B has a Mario type of outfit. 
both seem fine, but apparently within the game file shows a me outfit C, which never made it into the final game. It's possible to load up this me outfit with hacks, however due to the files of it being removed from the game disc, it's impossible to see what it's going to look like. And from this video we can see that it messes all of the cart stats once you pick it. The icon is also very different from the original two, which feels as though this didn't really get too far into development. Either that, or it looks like this was going to be an earlier version of the Mii outfits instead of the icons we got now. Mario Kart DS Lost Beach. This comes from Mario Kart DS unused course, which is called Noko Noko Course which has a beach style to it. Not all the textures are finished, and if you go out of bounds, then the game crashes. There already was a new beach-themed track in DS, which was Cheap Cheap Beach, so it's most likely that this is the reason why they never continued on this other beach level. However, SwankyBox over here did an amazing video on this topic, covering the level in much more detail. So if you want to go watch that video to learn more about it, uh, I'll leave a link in the description, go check them out. Mario Kart for Nintendo GameCube. This is basically the Double Dash beta. This beta has very little information, and there isn't any footage apart from an 8 second clip online. All that's in this clip is Mario and Luigi driving around. You can notice that their models are just basically ripped from Super Smash Bros. Melee, and considering the fact that this footage was from 2001, it makes more sense as to why their models were from there. Since honestly, they probably just put this clip together in like a few hours or just a very short amount of time to show that a new Mario Kart was in development. And considering the fact that the two player kart mechanic feature isn't here, it shows that this video was very rushed. So yeah, I think this was just for a teaser. Mimitachi, I think that's how you say it. So you know Tamagotchi, those little handheld digital pet things? I'm sure many of you have heard of these, but they were super popular back in the 2000s, and are still going to this day. Well, the thing is, the main mascot of the series is a character called Memotachi, which is this cute character you see on the screen right now. But what does this have to do with Mario Kart? Well, to many people's surprise, they are actually a playable character in Mario Kart Arcade GP2. And they even have a couple courses themed after them, and plus have so many advertisements for Tamagotchi all over the tracks. It's a cool guest character that nobody really expected. VB Mario Kart. This refers to an unreleased Mario Kart game that was going to be on the Virtual Boy. You can already see as to why it was unreleased due to the failure of the Virtual Boy. It appears in a gaming magazine where they list off a bunch of upcoming games for the console, and one being listed as VB Mario Kart. Apart from this, there is little to no information on the project itself, as it never even got even far into development, so all we can really do is guess and speculate. Sonic and Tails were planned for Mario Kart Double Dash. Alright, so this comes from an interview that Shigeru Miyamoto did before Mario Kart Double Dash's release, in which he said this, We're having a series of meetings about Mario Kart for the GameCube, and we've come to the point where we'll be making some drastic changes compared to the other games. Sonic the Hedgehog might be one of the drivers. I honestly have no idea why Miyamoto said this, since as far as I can tell, this is the only thing that sparked up the interest. There is no other evidence about Sonic being playable or planned for Double Dash, but of course, because of this interview, many people began spreading rumours and theories and hoaxes about Sonic being in Double Dash. And I mean, I don't blame them, since this interview was very weird, and it, I, I, it's just, the quote just doesn't make sense to me. Obviously, the reason why Tails is here is because of the whole two-player mechanic thing in the game, and Tails makes the most sense for a duo with Sonic. My only guess is that Miyamoto was trying to make a joke here, because right before he talks about how the series was going to be drastically changed compared to the other games in the series, that is all I've got, since there was legit no other reason why he said this. Like, yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> I feel like it was a joke, but it just didn't come out right. Mario Kart 64 Town Track. This comes from the source code of the game where the, there is a track called Town underscore PK. It has somewhat of a co uh, complete look to it. You can see some screenshots on the screen right now with people theorizing that, that this track could have been too big as, and that's why they got rid of it. To me, it seems like it would have been a fun track and I can see it being a bit cramped within these alleyways, but apart from that, it looks to be a lot of fun. And I keep seeing a lot of interesting furries that it looks like the village from Ocarina of Time. I don't think they have any resemblance, but I mean, it's a good fairy. 
The Mushroom Moon Musical. This comes from the Mario Kart Wii track, Moon View Highway, where you can see this billboard to the side of something called the Mushroom Moon Musical. Now, if we rip the game files and grab the image in higher quality, here it is. Now, people say it's a reference to King Kong, and it probably is, that's probably most likely what it is. However, this is just supposed to be a very small easter egg that probably doesn't mean anything, but for some reason, people have taken this poster to extremes with theories. For example, people keep saying that the title here is the same font as Pikmin, and because of that, I believe that these dates here were hinting at a new Pikmin game. Another story is that you can see Petey Piranha on the poster, which many people believe that they were a secret unlockable character, you know, considering that they never returned from Double Dash. And even on the starring cast, they, were, they weren't listed here, and it made many people believe it even more. Another thing as well is that if you're playing as a me on the track, Peach's head will just be gone and replaced with a me's face. However, if the me direct uh, directory isn't working, you just get this poster of Peach without a head, which is very cursed, and it's created some people creating some very uh, creepy theories about this, and honestly, it's just really funny. However, it's just an easter egg poster, I don't think there's much to it, but for, like I said, for some reason, people made it a really big deal. SEQ underscore circuit 2. This is an unused song for Mario Kart DS, and I don't mean within the game files, it was actually in the demo version of Mario Kart DS. This song exists nowhere in the final version of the game. For many theories, it was most likely a placeholder and played on multiple different tracks. And honestly, I really think that it was trying to show the player of what type of music to expect in this game, as this game was a Mario Kart game with MIDI files, and they wanted to show players what they could do with it. Either way, a link for the full song will be in the description if you want to hear it. Rainbow Road in F-Zero X So in F-Zero X, which is the Nintendo 64 F-Zero game, within a cup called the Joker Cup, it's literally just Nintendo 64's Rainbow Road, but without some of the railings and some slight differences that help fit the F-Zero game style. Some really cool additions to this course is that if you have the expansion kit for the game, instead of it playing normal music, it will actually play a heavy metal remix of the Mario 64 Rainbow Road theme, and that's really cool. Plus, if you attempt to do the Ultra Shortcut in the original game, you'll car will actually just blow up and results in a death, which is really funny. Despite the original being super long, you can actually beat a lap within this version within about 20 seconds, so yeah. Terrorist Attack Image in Mario Kart Arcade GP so we've talked about the Mario Arcade games quite a lot on this iceberg, however, within the first game released in October 2005, there were a lot of unused content within the game files. However, there exists three JPEG images to help test the camera feature out. The first image shows multiple different colours, which was most likely a colour test. The second image is a bit strange, as it shows mascots of an expo that was held in 2005, Again, I'm not sure why this is here and why it was used for a camera test, as I'm not sure it would have helped. However, the third and last image shows a photo of a school hostage crisis where over 1,000 people were taken hostage within a school located in Russia. I honestly have no clue why this is here, and I don't see how this would have helped test the camera feature at all. An image like this should not be in a Mario Kart game, but according to the files, it was supposed to be used for a testing of the camera feature, and I doubt we'll ever get an explanation for this. Tesla Mario Kart game. This isn't really anything too big, but multiple models of Tesla cars have giant screens that you can use in your car, and for some reason they added the choice to play games. Many people suggested Mario Kart to be playable, however Elon Musk replied in a tweet to a fan suggesting Mario Kart and said, we tried, Nintendo won't license it to us. Thus indicating that Tesla were going to try and get Mario Kart playable for their cars. It's pretty obvious as to why Nintendo said no, as playing games or other distractions in a car can cause crashes or injuries. And Nintendo knows that car accidents are some of the most easy and common practices for lawsuits within court. So for the people's safety and the safety of them losing their money in court, they denied the deal. And there we have it, that was the Mario Kart Iceberg. I had a lot of fun making this, and this took many, many days to make. However, I'm glad I've been able to finally release it, and I hope that, honestly, you the viewer out there enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments, as all support, or likes, anything, it's all very appreciated, so thank you. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!